So in the last video, we looked at the connect command. What this allowed us to do uh, was set up a new project and add some raw data. So we added a, an SDR file. Uh, that SDR file gets converted to an RW5 and the raw data is listed uh, in this editor here. We then edited the control and we adjusted the coordinates to MGA coordinates, which would have shifted our uh, survey onto MGA. We can see that uh, the control has been edited because the background color of these items here um, are yellow. We then reviewed the survey in the 2D viewer. And what we're gonna have a look at in this session is creating the Kogo points in uh, CAD. Uh, we're going to string up those Kogo points as well and uh, look at a whole bunch of other tools like um, uh, the surface style, surface labels, um, uh, reviewing our surface in model viewer, which is 3D uh, visualization. So, uh, so we'll check out all those tools later on. So before I go and create the points, there's a couple of things I want to uh, show you. So in the first video, we looked at the code set and the data we have is numeric so we're going to be using this numeric um, uh, code set and we want to make sure that codes that our raw data have an associated uh, entry here so uh, in order to check that that's the case what we do is we go to the view drop down and run code report so at the top, the software's already set our default code set and default string set. So that's just uh, based on our defaults. So the software's reviewed our raw data and it knows that it's numeric. And then for every code, say for example, this 201 code, we can see that we have two points in our raw data and the style it's gonna use is tree. However, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see some entries that are blue. And uh, what that tells us is that code does not exist in the code set. So we have the opportunity by running this button here, add unclass codes to point code set. We can add that uh, code entry into the code set and define a, a style. Now these points will still be created. They'll just be using our defaults. Um, now you'll notice that we have some trees. It should be 201, but they're uh, specified here is TR. Um, we could make them 201s, but we'll keep them as TR. We're actually going to use these trees later on when we do the uh, multi symbol example. So, anyway, I'm going to leave uh, everything as is. That's, that's cool. We'll select close on that. Next thing I want to do before I import the points is review the reduced coordinates. So, what we can see here is a list of all our reduce coordinates, point number, easting, northing, elevation, and description. And the first column here is uh, include. So if we didn't want to include uh, the creation of, of particular Kogo points, what we can do is select. So for example, these check shots, I'm gonna to go tools, exclude, selected, and then we've excluded those, they won't be added. Now. You can actually exclude or include based on a number of different um, properties. For example, you know, we could exclude points based on their point number or elevation. Maybe we don't want points that are uh, at an elevation of zero being added, for example, or if the elevation is too high. Uh, we can also include and exclude by polyline. So I could draw a polyline and tell the software to only include points that fall within that polyline, okay? The other thing we can do here is output a convex hull, which I'll do. And this is just a polyline around the extents of our points. So this is, um, we obviously would have a point here and a point there, and then this polyline covers the extents of our survey. So it can be useful to, to bring that in just to, uh, once again, give you, you some confirmation of where the points are going to be inserted once, they're, once they've been created. 
So, um, so this is the reduce point. I mean, you can export this to a table and a CSV file if you want, um, but I think we're pretty good to go. So I'm going to close reduce coordinates, and then what I'm going to do is run create update Kogo points. So when you do that, you get this dialog box appear. We confirm the code set, uh, default point style, and not only do I want to create the points, to create the Kogo points, but I also want to string them up. So I'm going to click on string points. The point group that we're going to be stringing is contourable surface. That's also, if you remember, the point group that's going to create a surface for us. And then the string set we're using is the numeric um, string set. So remember the software's picked these because of the string defaults option in the settings that we looked at in the first video. So if I click on create Kogo points, you can see that the software quite quickly has created the Kogo points and also created the strings. And some of those strings actually uh, are break lines that have been added to our surface. So we also have a surface there represented by the contours. Now that convex hole polyline, I'm going to select that and delete it. So a couple of things. I have connect still open. And if I click on a side shot, let's move this to the side here. You can see the software zooming to that point in CAD. In actual fact, if I was to make a change to, a, uh, to say a bearing or vertical distance in this interface, you would actually update the point in CAD. So there's a connection between the two. Um, but let's test this out on, um, on one of the points. So let's go to this point here's one, two, four, eight. So let's just go to one, two, four, eight, which is this 104. And maybe instead of a bearing, sorry, one, two, four, eight, instead of a bearing of 192, let's make it 200 and then we'll go update. Right, you can see that point has moved to here. Okay, so because we've made uh, an edit, you'll notice that that entry now has a yellow background. Now, if we wanted to bring that point back to where it was, all we need to do is right click and select reset item. So if I confirm that we want to reset back to the original value, I say yes. And if I go back down to that point, you can see that it's no longer yellow. However, um, we notice that the point has not updated. So what we need to do is run create update Kogo points, and then that point will shift back to um, its original location. Okay, so I'm gonna close down connect. Um, now at, at any point in time, we can go and run connect again and open up our, um, our raw data. Um, uh, just remember that any change you make in here, you need to um, run create update Kogo points to commit that point, uh, com commit that edit and update the, uh, the Kogo point in CAD. Okay, so as we can see, we've got our Kogo points created. We've got some strings, although some of them are incorrect. We've got this uh, string running from the cricket nets back to a point here. Um, so in other words, there's probably a point with the same code 91205 uh, here. So we need to fix that up. Um, there are some strings that are out of order as well, which we will uh, fix up. So we've got our points, we've got uh, the strings, and we also have a surface uh, objects. And we know that because we can see uh, the contours displayed. So let's have a look first at the tool space. So if I expand out point groups, these are the point groups now that contain points. So our contourable point group, which is creating the surface. We have a point group called trees, which contain uh, our trees. And then a point group, uh, called all points, which just includes all our Kogo points. Now, if I was to expand out Contourable, uh, I have a heading points and a heading survey string. So we can see all our survey strings. We can see our, our uh, all our points. If I double click, then um, we can zoom to a point. 
And if, if you were to right click, um, you get some options here. You can edit a Kogo point. Now this, this edits a bit different to the raw data. So the raw data creates the Kogo point. However, um, using edit point, we could, um, you know, change the code, change the elevation. Um, however, if we were to go back to connect and re-update, then anything here would be overridden. So edits like the, the position and the elevation, you really should perform those edits in connect so it's all tracked. Um, but um, editing points could be useful just for adding extra properties to that point um, if you wanted to. Um, or, or overriding the point style um, as well. So, um, so that's edit point. Um, you can also right click and, and override the elevation and code directly from a right click <coughs> rather than going into the uh, edit Kogo point form. So points in the point group are listed here and then our survey string. So sort of similar, if I double click, I can zoom to a string. Uh, the software will actually highlight the string for me and I can see the points that are included in that string. And um, we can make some uh, edits to the string directly from the tool space and I'll show that a little bit later. So if you want to start adding some arcs to the string or you know, close a string off or reorder a string, you can make those, uh, perform those edits from here. Um, but we'll, we'll do that a little bit later on. So if I right click on point groups and go to the point groups manager, we had a look at this uh, in a previous video, but what we can see here now is Conturable is populated with a bunch of Kogo points. We can see that uh, this is how many points are in the Conturable point group and it contains 80 survey strings. Conturable has been told to create a surface and that surface is called survey surface. Okay, so just confirmation that we have points in our point group. So I'm going to close that down. So if we expand out CSA surfaces, I have a, a surface here called survey surface. Right? We know that as well because we can see the contours. So if I right click on survey surface, we can open up the surface manager, uh, which we'll have a look at in a sec. We can toggle on and off the contours. We can toggle on and off the triangles. So um, yeah, quite often when you work with break lines, you want to review the triangulation. And we can see that uh, you know, that break line from the cricket nets is really playing havoc with our triangulation. So uh, we'll we will fix that one up. Um, let's turn the triangles off. We can run water drop. This will tell us where water is going to run to, which is obviously around this location incorrect because water is running along um, incorrectly because of that, that break line. Um, when we fix that break line issue, uh, we will update our water drops. And I think we can just do that by running this refresh button. Um, th this refresh button is sort of like an update everything um, as well. So not only does it update the tool space, but it can update um, a bunch of stuff. So we can run commands from the tool space by right clicking. Um, you can also run commands directly off the object as well. And in, in BricsCAD, we do this by using the quad. So if I hover over um, the surface, we can see we have a command here. This is a water drop command. If I head over to survey, these are all our stringer survey commands. So toggling on and off. Um, Let's go back to that, toggling on and off contours, triangles, um, water drop, they can all be done from here. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure if we hover over the water drop, there's a command to update water drops um, as well. So if our surface changes, um, we might run that uh, in a sec. Um, now, even on the point, so if I um, hover over a point, then we have some commands here, edit uh, point, uh, run the helmet transformation. Um, there's a bunch of other commands that I haven't showed yet. This one will open up the point groups. If I click on edit point, this is the, um, the point editor. So we can see all the properties of the point, things like the point number, the easty northing elevation code. Um, but a lot of these, um, 
properties such as the the positioning the elevation um, because we're working with raw data it, it makes sense to make those edits in the raw data uh, in fact if i was to make any change here to the elevation code or uh, a point number or whatever when i update points in connect um, it's just going to override uh, any change you make here but this interface is good for adding in extra properties that you want to store um, on a point um, or even override the style of the point um, as well so let's uh, close uh, that down okay so let's uh, have a look next at um, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll visualize this survey in 3d because I think once you've imported some points built a surface it's good to see that surface in 3d see if there's any obvious spikes or issues with the, the, the surface so we can do that by running model viewer down the bottom let's just click on that model viewer will load and the first window you greeted with is toggle display now um, we only have one surface I'm going to tick off primary design and only use the base surface here at the moment where we're using the grass style but what I'm going to do is change that to image from drawing and I'm going to pick that aerial image from drawing and click OK okay so what we're looking at here is our survey and that uh, break line that's causing havoc we can see it spiking up there um, as well so it's, uh, one of the benefits of, of viewing in 3D. Uh, we can change the exaggeration, so if you want to put an exaggeration of 4 in, then you can really see uh, a bit more detail in the, the triangulation. Uh, but let's go and set that back to 1. Now, if we do make changes to our survey, Model Viewer will automatically update. Um, for example, maybe this point and uh, this point down here, I just don't want to include that. So um, I'm going to select that point and delete it you can see model viewer updating and i'm going to select this point down here and delete it as well and there's a few points i mean i could just delete those points and that will will fix my uh my issue maybe we do that so i'm going to select those points and delete yeah so by doing that it's actually um, deleted or updated my string that was running to that uh, dodgy point um, down the end there. So our survey is looking a lot better. You can actually view the points and the strings in Model Viewer as well. So if I go to Survey tab, we can pick our point group, which is Contourable Surface, pick a, a label style, and then if I want to show the points, I tick on Points. If I want to show the strings, I pick on strings. Now the points are just like a little dot. And you can also show the labels, but I find they can get a little bit messy, but uh, maybe we just want to show the point number or, or, the, sh or the code. So you can use the toggles in here to do, to do that. Um, not that we'll do do it in this video, but you can actually convert points to 3D objects. So um, Stringer does come with a library of 3D objects. Um, so maybe you had a 3D object of a tree. So whenever the software finds a tree, it'll add a, a model of a, a 3D tree. So that's what um, this object uh, relates to. But anyway, uh, Model View is quite handy to have open, to review the, the surface, um, see if there's any... Uh, obvious issues with the um, the surface after you've triangulated it and look it's something you could leave open on another monitor so as you're performing edits you see things update before I shut it down um, under visual style you can show render with edges so we can see our triangulation as well so as we're making edits performing edits to break lines we can see the, um, uh, the edges update Okay, so I'm going to close down Model Viewer. Okay, so it's just a couple more things I want to do before we uh, end this session. Um, so since we 
uh, made a change to our triangulation. Our water drops are out of date. Um, so we could update those by selecting the refresh button, uh, but also mentioned if we uh, hover over a water drop and go to the quad, we can run update water drops. And you see those water drops have now recalculated. And those two that were out here um, have been removed. So let's just have a, a little bit more of a look at um, managing our surface display. Uh, we can do this by running the surface manager command, which you can access by right clicking on the tool space. You can hover over, go to the quad and run surface manager. So there's a few different ways you can access this command. I find it easy just to go to the tool space and open up surface manager. So via surface manager, you can, well, firstly, let's uh, look at this left-hand side here. So we've got inputs, outputs, and statistics. So statistics will give us some information about the surface, minimum, uh, maximum elevations, area, how many triangles, points, that type of thing. Inputs um, are really about uh, editing and creation of a surface so we can do things like build a surface from 3d faces or points we can add additional break lines to this surface if we wanted to all we need to do is create a 3d polyline put it on a layer and then select add to that layer so any 3d polyline on that layer will be added as a break line to the surface um, so look you can create new surfaces um, maybe you wanted to create a surface from a point file directly. Um, we can add boundaries, so maybe we want to hide certain parts of the surface. Um, and, and let's do that. Let's um, draw a polyline. I'll just create a polyline and close that off. So I'm going to go add, pick on that polyline. So that entries appeared here. I want to say that this is a outer boundary so anything outside the polyline will, will be uh, hidden and we'll say that it's uh, an exact so any triangle um, or triangles will reform to the, uh, the boundary edge. So if I click on build surface you can see that we've added that boundary and we can edit the polyline and then just go build surface again and we can see that that boundary uh, has updated. So really easy to add a, a boundary to your surface. I'm going to delete that polyline and we can delete that entry as well and hit build because I don't want to uh, add a boundary to the surface. If we go to editing then if I hover over we can do things like flip edges, delete edges so these are just direct edits so we can perform on the triangulation. So inputs um, really two things. One is if we create a new surface, we can build a surface from 3D faces, points, point files. Um, break lines allows us to add additional break lines to the surface. Um, it's just 3D polylines on a particular layer and we add that layer here. We can add boundaries and then editing is really about uh, direct edits on the triangulation, flipping edges, uh, edges and deleting edges. So output's all about the display. Um, the first tab is contours and mesh, so we can turn the mesh on and off. We can pick what color we want for the mesh. In regards to the contours, maybe we, we want to you know, turn on and off the major and minor contours. Maybe you want to change their interval, pick a different color. And mind you, if you are going through and you're changing layers, changing colors, you can uh, save this style as a new style. Um, so you could use this style for future projects um, as well. So the contour labeling tab allows us to uh, set up contour labeling um, uh, on our contour. So maybe what we'll do is I'll just tighten up the interval here. Let's go 0.1. And the other thing I might do is just put a fade on that aerial image. And I'll just turn the triangles off for now. So under contour labeling, um, at the moment, I'm just getting contour labels at the start and the end. Um, but maybe I want to put them in the middle for uh, major and minus. So we'll go update to that. And we can see there now that we're getting 
these extra contour labels. And maybe I want to tighten up the spacing to 25. Right, so we're getting a lot more contour labels appearing. Um, we can do custom contour labels as well. So if I uh, run label by line and draw a line through here, then uh, at the moment set to any major contour will be labeled up, but I can say all and then all labels or all contours that uh, intersect that line uh, labeled up. So we can move that line, you can see the labeling just update. Okay, so that's uh, contour labeling. I'm gonna turn off those mid labels and turn off label by line and update the display just to make it a bit cleaner. So then slopes and arrows, if we tick on slopes and arrows and go update display, this is drawing um, arrows on our triangles and the color represents the uh, how steep the triangle is. So um, anything that was really steep would, would highlight purple or blue. Okay, so obviously around this sort of embankment here, we've got purple slope. Green's relatively flat, okay? But we can see the direction that the arrows are pushing and that makes sense because our water drops are also running to this point around here. So let's turn off the slope arrows. You can do a slope shading as well. Uh, so you can shade in the triangles based on the slope. Um, <clears throat> height shading's quite useful. So if I tick on height shading, uh, in this case, I just have to set up the height shading analysis because um, the software um, will want to set up the shading based on the minimum, maximum uh, elevations for this surface. So we click OK, update, and then we're shading in based on um, uh, elevations. Now you can actually also output a legend table for this. So I click on legend table, pick a point. We then also have a legend table for that analysis. Let's just move that like that. It's just a, a standard bricks CAD table. So let's turn off the height shading and update. So um, outputs control the mesh display, colors, layers, um, contour, intervals, contour colors, contour labeling is about adding extra, or adding labels to the contours or even drawing your own line and, and um, manually placing contours. Then we've got some analysis, so slope, uh, arrows and uh, and height shading. And just remember for any of the analysis you can also output a uh, legend table. So that's a, a bit of an overview of the surface manager. Uh, we can export this surface out to an XML file. You can also uh, bring in other surfaces by uh, importing an Excel XML file um, as well. So just to wrap up this video, I just want to add a few extra labels to this surface. And we can do this by running the label plan command. So it opens up with this form. And the two different types of labels I'm going to add, one is a, a spot elevation and the other one is a two point slope label. So to add a label, I just double click. This form appears, you just give it a name. So I'm gonna call this my spot elevations. Pick a style. You can create these styles. I'm not gonna delve in deep on style setup, but uh, these are fully customizable. So I just want a standard elevation and it's going to uh, grab the elevation off survey surface. So if I click on add labels, all I do is select where I want the spot elevation to go. Okay, let's exit that. And now let's go and add some slope labels. So we double click two point slope. So let's call this my slope labels. Once again, you pick a style and the surface that you're referencing. Add labels. And with these, we need to pick two points, start and end. Uh, and then the software will draw in the label for us. Let's press escape. So with these labels, um, we can adjust them. So if I select on this slope label here and move it around, you can see the label updating there as we adjust it. Okay, so finally, um, our 
labels will scale based on the annotation scale that's currently being set. So my scale is set to uh, 1 to 200. If I go and change that to say uh, 1 to 500, you can see all of those labels uh, increase in size. Let's just make it, uh, bring it back to say 1 to 250. And let's just make it uh, 1 to 100. This is also the same on your viewports. So if you create some viewports on model space, uh, sorry, on paper space, then all you need to do is uh, a regen and then all the labels will automatically size based on the scale of that, uh, that viewport. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to jump in to the, um, the Survey String Manager and we're going to start fixing up some of our um, strings um, that, that need to be edited. And then we'll have a look at um, some uh, other outputs like uh, outputting a, a legend table um, and even a, a Google um, KML file as well.